Hey, what's up, DNC Performance? We're at the shop and making progress. Yesterday I got that tub ball in. Got the patch up front, everything fully welded on that side. This one was not good. Um, just wasn't fitting right. So I came in today. You can see it's got a bunch of hammer marks. But I'm going to try and dolly those back out. Um, it's not anything that will affect anything, but aesthetic wise it just looks like crap that somebody had to kind of beat that to get it formed in. But I ended up cutting this side pretty much most of the way out on the whole outside and basically trying to reshape it back in and I finally got it. Um, I got the torque boxes are fully welded in now along the bottom of the frame and I did the windows I just put little tacks these are just like aesthetic pieces and then up in there turn the light on I got that corner fully welded that corner fully welded that corner fully welded that corner fully welded the whole plate all the way around then I noticed this frame rail she got a good ding up in her so I kind of filled in that gap I couldn't can't pull that out um, I don't have like a dent puller or nothing to get that out. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. Fully welded in. Everything's fully welded now. Um, only thing I have left to do is the little patch in front of this floor pan. Or for that floor pan. I got that. And then uh, I got some seam sealer. That I'm gonna run pretty much on the inside all the way around. Uh, both of the seams that I've had to do um, and then you can see where I cut that got it back together I gotta finish this back here plate the end um, plate the sides over here the rocker sides so I'm gonna start working on all that get those plates done uh, get that patch in there once I get everything done I'm gonna wipe it all down real real good with some like that wax and grease remover crap and then, uh, I'll come back and we'll see where we're at alrighty then so well it's like 130 something like that I got tubs all welded up seam sealed everywhere that I can in the edges on the inside and the outside and then quick coat of paint for now on the outside black but all the seam sealer smashed in all the way around uh, the inside I did it gray you can't really see too much of that seam so that's good and then I shot a little bit down in the frame rail just so that everything doesn't flash over um, but I capped that corner capped that corner that corner now this is eighth inch plate that's just tin that up there is tin and that's more eighth inch plate so I'll get another can of black in the morning because uh, right now what I'm gonna do is take the rear end and being that we're gonna narrow it I'm not gonna bother doing the lower brackets just yet but I'll get the like the horizontal shock mounts I'll get those off um, and then we have the bushings coming so I'll leave those on for now just so I can set the rear end in the car I'll get that bottom snubber bracket thing off um, and get it ready to go in the car and I actually have a diff cover that I'll actually offer to them I don't know where it is <laughs> it's here somewhere but it's one of the big thick aluminum diff covers um, but yeah so I'm gonna drag that over here and hook up the link bars to it the upper and lower link bars and then possibly shove it up into place have it hanging and then I'll be able to lower the car might not be able to do that now that I think about it, I have no shock, so I might need to lower the car down 
I'll slide that over, uh, put the wheels on it, and kind of I'll hook get it hooked up, and then see where how the shock's gonna sit. And I'll get that bar welded in. I got that over there. That's the shock mount for the coilovers. Um, so yeah, I'll get all that done, and I'll return again. Already, already end of the day. Last update, I am getting ready to leave for the day. I gotta go pick some stuff up. But, I got the, the shock brackets fully welded on and then I sprayed them with primer. But I left the inside of it bare so that I could weld the anti-roll bar tabs, which I bolted that in. I didn't take the plastic off it yet, which I probably should have done, but I didn't do, oh well. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, and I noticed that it has no paint on it. That's what happens when you do everything with the car more on the ground. But so yeah, all the link bars are in, um, and they're adjusted. What I do is I mark them, and then I count the rotations. I get them all the way in, and then I count the rotations out, and I quick measured kind of where the rear end is sitting, and you can see it's pretty centered where it is right now um, I tried sticking a wheel on but I'm not sure might have just been me but it, it seemed like this is a little big for that rear so I might have to grind that out a little bit just to get them on and get it to a roller but you can definitely see why the rear end needs to be narrowed um, and with this double adjustable and it has the heim joints we could actually take the instant center brackets and scoot them in a little um, to give a little more room to have less backspace of a rim but right now as of right now even if we were to leave it like that be able to move the axle flange in like four inches be able to move the axle flange in that'd be eight inches off the rear end my plan is to move the instant center brackets in um, so we can take the lower link bar and scoot it out a little bit you know maybe another inch or so may not need to but he has to get the rims before we narrow the rear end so that we can narrow the rear end to the rims um and then we'll figure out the instant center brackets and all that good crap but yeah i think i uh, made out pretty good today i'm gonna end up having to put some plastic on all this or pop the shock back off they're fully bolted in um these are the strange double adjustable hyper coil 110 pound springs uh they're the 12 inch 110 pound springs right now uh, the way I measured these was I put the spring together and I cranked the top spanner all the way just about till you can't get it to turn by hand. Then I had the lock ring all the way down on both of them and I took a dial caliper and I measured between them. Um, just a rough kind of zero point on them. I do try to always put all the lettering to the back. I think it looks good. The strange. Uh, then the hyper coil stuff so you can read it you don't have to look for it um, so yeah like I said that's it for today I will come back in the morning and I'll build the links this kit you have to build the link so these are the anti roll bar links and they have the weld in bungs some chromoly tubing so these are the left hand thread, these are the right hand thread. So I'm gonna get these welded in first and then I'll set them up in the car. Gotta kinda figure out where full droop is, um, which would be the shock fully extended, which is about where it's at right now. I could actually take these out. So that's the shock, fully extended. Nothing holding the rear end up. Oh boy. 
So now, basically I'll take the anti-roll bar. Oh, gee, a little tight. I don't know, this one needs to kind of work in or you know, pull it back off and give it a good working. But I did put like wheel bearing grease on it. It's kind of working itself in, but I'll take this and I'll kind of sink it down about here. I know how much shock travel I have. And then I can measure between the link point and roughly the floor. Like I can put a piece of tape or something across the floor and I can measure to see where that link has to go. So I can put the tab and build the link um, so that there's no interference. Make sure the link doesn't, you never want your anti roll bar to go like vertical. Um, and then when you set the car, it'll be really hard to pop it back up and it'll probably hit the rear end and bend it over. So you don't want, we don't want that. We don't want that. No, no. I also kind of ground the rear end a little bit. I got to finish going around it with like a wire wheel and I'll get the tubes fully welded while it's here and up on the lift and I have everything out. She died. Not sure, yeah, transmission. So I could probably throw the drive shaft back in it and stop that from happening because I hate transmission fluid on my floor and I just cleaned it. But for now, that's it. I appreciate you watching. Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell to be notified of new videos, and thanks for watching. Have a good day.